Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about stupidity again. Today's topic is the five laws of stupidity. So I stumbled upon a beautiful blog elaborating on the work of late uh, Carlo Cipolla, who actually published in 70s his five laws of stupidity. And uh, just to start with the first law uh, that people underestimate the number of stupid people around them. The next law is maybe the most important one because it actually illustrates how biased we are. Uh, stupidity is not correlated to other characteristics. For example, you can find out that even among well-educated and intelligent people, there are stupid people in sociological and societal sense. For example, you can find even people who got the Nobel Prize won, uh, that they are actually stupid. The procedure which is back then celebrated as the cure for everything in psychiatry. So. I digged in, in, in uh, comment, comments that were beside that blog and I really find some gems. I will share some of, of them with you. But actually I stumbled upon of another author who was uh, active in the 40s. His name was Dietrich Bonnenhofer. He was actually a priest. He was elaborating on many interesting things of how to approach the conflict between believers and atheists and one of the things that he wrote back then was that stupidity is not related to other characteristic of a person. He wrote stupidity is not an intellectual defect so much so as the moral one which is truly important to realize. Uh, unfortunately uh, that brave man who was opposing the Nazis and I must say, that among Nazi movement, it was great number of stupid people, like Cipolla actually defined it. Unfortunately, he was executed a couple of weeks before the liberation of Nazis in 1944. There are so many people writing about it, and uh, among most important research that we know today about the phenomena, our so-called Dunning-Kruger effect. And when you read how uh, David Dunning and Justin Kruger started their research, uh, Dunning explained that he was always fascinated of why people are so much overrated their own uh, expertise and uh, intellect. For example, says that it is unbelievable that 94% of uh, interviewed uh, professors actually think that they are perform above the average when we all know that not everyone can be above the average and Dunning and Kruger actually uh, perform very interesting experiments on that trying to for example figure out how people think of how funny are they and basically everyone thinks that he's supreme comedian and after that when actually increasing the level of tests to estimate their intellectual powers, everyone was Bertrand Russell or the like. So basically what Dunning and Kruger find out in series of experiments in Cornell University was incompetent people are chronically overestimated their, their ability and two, they are also unable to recognize somebody else's expertise so it is not connected only to yourself. They, they are not good at recognizing competence their own or anyone else's for that matter. For example, if you know nothing about, let's say, medicine and you think you, you're so smart, you know everything, you even cannot recognize when across you is a person who is highly educated and knowledgeable in, in and that. In connection with Dunning-Kruger effect, which is so uh, interesting topic in, in, in the time where we, when we are living. Uh, incompetent t people are so um, confident that they know everything best. And Bertrand Russell's, uh, Russell also uh, talked about that the actually stupid people are the most dangerous people because they are so confident they know everything. 
everything. The more you know, the more knowledgeable and wise you are, you're actually aware of your biases. You're, you're aware about the reality and you comprehend what else I don't know. And there is a lot of, to learn. And this is also uh, the other way uh, effect. If you know something very well, you immediately uh, conclude that other people can understand something with, with ease like you do or that you can perform very complex tasks and you're biased in that uh, manner. Interesting in this context is uh, Darwin's Prize because uh, I, I think that uh, Darwin's Prize is in direct connection with Dunning-Kruger effect. Uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, the, the, the five laws. The law one, number one, as Chipola defined it, everyone underestimates the number of stupid people. As Chipola put it, law number one, everyone underestimates the number of stupid people. Number two, the probability that the person is stupid is independent of any other characteristics. As, as I mentioned, uh, Bonhoeffer actually said the same, stupidity is not intellectually defect so much as a moral one. The law number three, a stupid person makes losses to others without gaining to himself. It is very interesting that Cipolla actually have very informative graph. They are actually four classes. People who are win-win, people who are intelligent, people who are causing gain to others while causing also gain to themselves. People who are willingly uh, damaging other people but uh, having something personally from that he called bandits and some criminals, maybe politicians. We can discuss about that as well. Uh, the third class of people are so-called helpless people who gain uh, profit to others, but they're uh, not having gained themselves. And stupid people are those who are causing damage to others while they're not gaining anything to themselves. So this is more like uh, social behavior. It doesn't have uh, any connection with intellect in education because people who are not educated can be educated and improve their performances, but they're not uh, stupid. In this sense, they, they are not in that category. Law number four, non-stupid people underestimate the danger of the stupid. Law number five, even I, I think maybe the most important is that stupid people are the most dangerous people on the planet. So I, I remember myself, uh, many famous writers and many of uh, my favorite authors like uh, Margaret Atwood stated, stupidity is the same as evil if you judge by the result. Beautiful and clever and brilliant Margaret Atwood. And George Carling also said, Think of how stupid the average person is and then imagine that half the people are stupider than that. Mark Twain also wrote, never argue with stupid people. They will drag you down to their level and then beat you with the experience. I guess that every one of us experienced something like this, but all this boils down to how one society is successful or unsuccessful. Let's say that normal distribution works everywhere in the nature, in the society, in the universe. So a certain amount of stupid people is inevitable to happen in, in every society. So if the fraction of clever people in society is very active, proactive, and they're actually making that society thrive and also are aware of the danger of stupid ones, they can kind of balance dumbos and the whole society thrives. In those societies, which are much worse, the stupid people have positions where they are doing harm to others without gaining uh, interest to themselves. But the clever people actually lost their chance to control for stupidity. So to conclude, be aware, the stupid people are the biggest danger in this world. Do something about that. Thank you for listening.